the dramatic transformation from caterpillar to butterfly, familiar to all of us from elementary school, is quite simply amazing. And the process provides a tremendously powerful metaphor for all kinds of change. Witness the theme of today's TEDx event. But what is it about the process of metamorphosis that inspires such wonder? After all, every sexually reproducing multicellular organism begins life as a single fertilized egg, develops complexity, and emerges into the world as an independent organism. The acorn develops into a mighty oak. A human fetus spends about nine months in a warm, dark pond before it emerges as an independent little human being. So why is metamorphosis so special? Metamorphic insects are unique because they do the whole development thing not just once, but twice. First, a single fertilized egg develops into a caterpillar, and then, in a second change, that organism transforms into another self-sufficient independent organism. For us, then, the process of metamorphosis can represent a major transition or a second chance, a message that it's not too late to change. In my research at Georgetown, I've been studying insect behavior and insect learning for a long time, and these questions have led me to the study of metamorphosis. I, I look at metamorphosis on a biological level, and I'm interested in what changes and what, if anything, persists between one stage and the next. Originally, caterpillars and butterflies were classified as two completely separate organisms. And why wouldn't they be? After all, they're totally different inside and out because they're adapted for entirely different jobs. The caterpillar is a feeding specialist. Its job is to eat leaves and get fat. That's it. The butterfly, on the other hand, is in charge of reproduction and dispersal. It uses its long tongue to feed on high energy nectar to power its flight. And its beautiful wings are used to attract mates and then also to fly long distances to deposit their eggs in new places. These big differences between larva and adult are in fact the key to what makes a life cycle of complete metamorphosis so tremendously efficient. The division of labor means that the two stages don't need to compromise in function and can evolve the traits best suited to their particular tasks. In fact, once this strategy of a division of labor evolved 280 million years ago, it gave rise to the most successful groups of insects and indeed of animals on Earth. It's not just caterpillars and butterflies that undergo complete metamorphosis. Also, beetles, flies, and bees, ants, and wasps undergo this complete transformation life cycle, along with their associated grubs, maggots, and larvae. So what's going on inside that chrysalis? Many people assume that the caterpillar turns entirely to goo, and that the butterfly is made from scratch. But that's not what happens. Although some of the caterpillar is in fact broken down and an amino acid rich soup is used to build the butterfly, not everything dissolves. Some structures are retained and remodeled and the goo oozes around some important scaffolding. Little structures called imaginal disks which contain the starter cells of antennae, wings, and other adult features were already in place when the tiny caterpillar first crawled out of its egg. These cells start dividing when the larva is close to pupation. When the caterpillar is big enough, a, hor a hormonal cue lets it know to shed its last larval skin, revealing the chrysalis beneath. Recently, scientists have been able to use new technology to look inside the living chrysalis during the actual transition from caterpillar to butterfly. And what we see is really startling. In this slide, the blue 
lines are the tracheal tubes or breathing tubes which provide air to the tissues. And you can see that from day one, the tracheal tubes are in place and they don't really change. The gut, shown in red, shrinks and gets narrower to accommodate a different diet, but it's present the whole time. It's remodeled, it's not reinvented. So clearly some things change and some things stay the same, but what happens in the area of brains and memory? I study insect behavior in my lab, and as I was, um, and, and as I studied caterpillars learning odors and butterflies learning colors, shapes, and patterns, I started to wonder, would it be possible to train a caterpillar to something that the butterfly could still remember? So uh, my student, Doug Blackiston, and I examined this question using the tobacco hornworm. We exposed the caterpillars to a mild electric shock in association with the odor, and then we tested the caterpillars in this Y-shaped maze. We put the caterpillars in the front and gave them a choice of that same odor and fresh air. And the caterpillars that had been exposed to the odor with the shock avoided the odor. Other caterpillars that had not had that aversive association didn't care and visited both arms equally. Okay, so the caterpillars learned, but what about the butterflies? What were the moths, rather? What would happen after metamorphosis? So we let the caterpillars pupate, waited a month, and then tested the moths in the same Y-tube apparatus with the same odors. What we found was that the moths that had come from the caterpillars that had learned to avoid the odor also avoided the odor. So the memory did, in fact, transfer across metamorphosis. We're not entirely sure exactly what the mechanism is, but clearly memory can persist from one stage to the next, providing a kind of a mental bridge between larva and adult. Which brings us back to the question of why metamorphosis is such a resonant metaphor for us. In addition to the reassuring idea that change is possible and that a second chance awaits us, the fact that the dramatic transformation unfolds in private means that only the changer needs to know what's happening and can wait until they're good and ready for the big reveal. The little bits of adult structures that are present in the hatchling caterpillar suggest that the potential for change is contained within us. And the retention of, of memory across metamorphosis reassures us that change is notwithstanding, we remain the same individual before and after. Not a bad crop of lessons from a crawling caterpillar. Thank you.